What's going on, Axie fam? Elijah here, back with another video. Today, I have one that I am pumped about. This is going to be featuring the Disable Soar, a highly requested Axie to do some content on. And I have with me today Paru Piro, who is a fellow CTG esports member, a teammate, a stand up guy, and a top Axie Infinity player. Welcome to the show. Yeah, glad to be here. I've actually started my career by watching your videos and I'm very happy to have been able to create something that's been hyped right now. Paru Piro is a top 100 player. I believe you finished 66th in season 17. And then last season, just outside, I think 130. Is that correct? Yeah, I finished about 138 last season. Okay. Uh, last day was kind of brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can totally happen, but obviously nothing to scoff at with 2 million players. That is an elite finish. His bread and butter is the Disable Sword build with a bug at the midline. We're going to break it down, show some games, give some options. And why don't we start with the king himself here, the Disable Sword. Can you tell the viewers what the concept is behind this really strong backline axie? Yeah, so the Disable Sword is... As its name says, the key is to disable the opponent's cards. So we have the headshot or the Kestrel and then the hotbot, the spicy surprise. So the Kestrel disables the opponent's horn cards, while the hotbot disables the opponent's mouth cards. So if you are able to play both of those, those in a single turn, then uh, your opponent is left with actually two out of his four cards to play. Exactly. And then on top of that, if you end with a stun, they're going to miss one as well. So this really cripples them, right? It doesn't have tons of damage, but its utility is through the roof. Really nice build. Now, you invented this version that has the bug midliner with discards. Traditionally, the Disable Sword is played with a Rice Gota Beast. But what Potter Piro did was came into the game. He said, I like the concept of this build but you switched out the beast for a bug that removes the opponent's cards why did you decide to do that yeah so initially i did go with the traditional route of the rice beast but while i was playing some games i just really didn't like the feel of the beast because if i ever face any double aquas or or a build with a bird at the back line i find that the beast just dies too quickly once my plant dies so I I think that the beast is actually quite a liability unless you have a very good draw early on. So I said, why not put the bug? And then as I was looking at the marketplace, I saw a discard bug. And I said, yeah, this works pretty well since if I discard their cards, uh, they have even less options. And then in the 1v1, I disable them. So they actually have no cards to play. And with that, I went with this. I started playing this in actually the off season of season 17. And then just about maybe a week from playing this bug, I actually climbed to number one at the off season. <laughs> pretty sick. Yeah, pretty sick. You've had a lot of success. And this is what you finished with last season, right? Yeah. Okay. So then up front, we're going with something that is important these days in the meta, Biden's on the tank. This is just because of how common the double poison reptile slash dusk teams are. Usually it comes down to your tank needing to close it out. And the Bidens gets rid of their deadliest threat, which is the spamming of grass snake. You also have zigzag, which allows you to heal up. It helps in that 1v1 as well. And I've chosen cattail here because of how much cute bunny and bug cards are floating around too. This can really be a game changer. Two zero costs. I have no energy gain, but I have quite a few zero costs on this build. So I should be managing that just fine as far as energy goes. So here you can see we have our team lined up, ready to go. I've elected for the 50 speed dusk on the back, which is important. You want to have as much speed there as possible. So if you're searching the marketplace, check it every day, wait for a deal to pop up on one of these really fast versions and go ahead and snag it. Yeah, by the way, I actually positioned my team slightly differently. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, what do they call that? The double the animal? Double yeah. yeah, bird. So How I do you place do? my bug behind the plant right now. And okay. then the plant goes to where the bug was. Plant goes to where the bug was. Like this? Yeah. Oh, so I snap. want my plant and my disabled sword to be attacking the same ah. the same double animon because the bug does shit damage to the Whoa. Uh, double animals. Yeah, that's a really heads up formation. <coughs> oh, that's sick. Okay, cool. Because now these two are going to target, you know, when the aqua split and one's in top, one's bottom, these two are going to target the top one and the uh, plant does 
way better damage than the bug. Yeah. This is going to be split 50-50, but you're not really going to be looking to use the bug to get the kill early on. You're going to hope for that more often with your plant, right? Yeah. Awesome. Let's jump into some games. We're sitting right around 200. I haven't been playing all that much this off season, but at 200, you're still going to be playing against plenty of top hundred players and uh, obviously people who just know what they're doing. So expecting some tough competition for sure. Okay. We have an opponent. This is a very tough team composition in general. And I'd say probably even harder for our team itself. Um, but let's go ahead and break down what we can do to get the win. Yeah, this guy is actually one of the worst matchups to face against our team. Mm. But luckily, we draw double zero cost at turn one. So might actually we can actually play everything, I think. I would say so, too. This is one of the reasons I like double zero cost plants these days is because uh, I can get rid of the fear that people are going to try to hit you with. So I'm just going to play all my cards, as Pato Piro said. And this is fantastic because at least we're going to get hit with a bunch of bug cards and Cattail will give us a whole bunch of new ones, which is pretty huge. So he plays all of his energy. Or no, did he play just two energy? He plays all of his energy. Okay. But he also used a Nemo. Yeah, so he's going to go back oh, to four, and he also got yeah, carrot. Yeah, because he okay, like cool. Carrot. But we get a really nice round there. Cards, damage, the tank is below half HP. We're still pretty healthy. So I'm happy with how that went down. Now, against Buntenna teams, which is basically cute bunny as well as the signals, you're going to need to watch out for these steals. So I don't really want to be passing here. I'm going to play the other cattail. I'll play the chomp because I want to save the Kestrel for the bug. And... As we can see, here's the two antennas. He's not going to be able to take our energy. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the most efficient play of all time, but this is just kind of what you have to do in this matchup, right, Padre Piro? Yep. So against the bunnies, we just really need to keep on attacking until we see most of their antennas and bunnies. Another thing to take note is he's actually running low on cards. He's, he should be only at four cards right now. So I just adjusted the camera so you can see the card counter. We're going to explore that a little bit later. Um, but basically, when you're playing discard bug, counting cards is almost even more important than counting energy, right? Yep. Because many times they actually have more energy than... What are you doing here? Hot cards. butt? So yeah, I do hot zigzag butt here. Yeah, yeah, zigzag heal. Yeah, we're still alive. He's got like quite a bit of energy, but as Paro Piro said, we're, he's low on cards. So we're discarding another one. I think he now has... Like five he's or something like that. Five. Yeah, he's yeah. at five. Are we going with our cards or is this around where we risk a pass considering we've gotten rid of, you know, maybe his other antenna options? What are you thinking? Yeah, here I actually just go for... I, I would go... I would attack with the Disabler Sword and disable both of his cards like a Headshot, Vine. Here you can actually choose between a Hot Butt or a Trump. Um, I'd go with the Trump. You would? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to follow Pato Piro's advice. Ooh, nice. He's got no fish snack. He's playing the other antenna that's going to miss. This is really not too bad for us. We're also going to make this bug missed, miss with the chomp. So yeah, that's, that's huge. Yeah. That's a garish worm that we're going to fade. And I believe he played all of his cards or maybe he had one left over. He has one left over. So, so now he's you got... can see actually in the top right the okay. amount of cards he has left. So now this is starting to be accurate. Sometimes you have to be careful following this because if there's three axes and one dies, it's not going to be properly represented. But guys, this shows you how many cards your opponent had in the last round. I've seen it be faulty here and there, so don't fall absolutely in love with it, but it can serve as a good indicator as to like what their options are. So he had five last round, played four. That put him to one card, and then he gets three back. So now he has four. Okay, what's our play here, Pato Piro? Other headshot yeah. and maybe... Actually, here I can sometimes even opt to pass. Okay. Because he has no antenna. Uh oh. Yeah, I don't. Oh, you're know. right. Because we is disabled. You're right. That's we a disabled. fish knock end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Fish knock would have actually not done much for us. Wow. Heads up, play Pato Piro. Because now we, we can go full stack. Yeah. Here we can go full stack on the bug. That was sick. Yeah. Double, I guess, double fish knock and bug sandals. Uh, and he's going to play the cards he has. So maybe just two, yeah. two bug signals to try to get the kill, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And this is the nice thing about bug splat, right? 
This does 100, no wait, no, it deals 50% more damage when attacking bug targets. It's almost 200 damage per slap. So we're going to go that's, ahead and hit him with this. That's 189. Yeah. Okay, here we go. And even if we get feared, it doesn't <coughs> matter because we have, and look at this, he's going to miss his energy Everything. because we played fish snack. And this is just going to be a measly amount. We're even going to hit him with our own fish snack damage. And we're just going to sample, oh, we even get the CTG, the crit. So to close this out, I'm just going to try, maybe I get lucky in last stand and get the discards off here. But I mean, are you going to start disabling now? Or are you going to wait for a fuller hand knowing you can defend, you know, at yeah, least I'm one? Gonna, I'm going to wait for a fuller hand because the disabled are needs a full hand to keep the opponent disabled every turn. Okay. He does not have enough damage anyway to burst us from full HP. Also, he's at three cards right now. So he's probably only going to play one. Okay, cool. So I'm going to try and get away with these discards. We'll see. Probably not. Oh, wow. Actually, I might. I'm going to get one off. That's nice. I'll take that. And actually, I think that's going to put him back to three next round, yeah. right? Yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. down to three cards. So, <laughs> and so that's see it. how this, this counter got kind of screwed up because he played... He had three and played two and we discarded one. So the game thinks he had two last round, even though he had three. It says he had two, which doesn't really make any sense. You never have just two cards. Yeah, that kind of bugs a bit. That's why I said to be careful about falling too much in love with it. Now, here's the beauty of the build. We're going to get to see it firsthand. Hot butt. What's so nice about this is the extra shield that you get when you combo it with Vine. Vine doesn't give you 30. It now gives you 60 because Hot Butt's a plant card. And you get double shield when playing it with a plant card. So the synergy here is through the roof. We're going to get to see that with not like a, a bunch of high shield cards, we're still going to end up with, I think, close to 200. 168, which is magnificent. He actually gets quite a nice draw, as much big damage as he could almost get there. But we're going to now disable his mouth, which takes away his biggest threat, which is Cute Bunny. That does the most damage to us. And his horn cards. So that takes away his highest shield card and also some more bug damage, which could hurt. And now he's in a world of trouble. He even, he just says, I'm done. He taps out. <laughs> he probably can't even play any card in his hand. Oh, that's a very rough position to be in, right? Yeah. Okay, that bumps us up the ranks a little bit. And I think we can go ahead and maybe try one more game. Yep. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the mid game where we passed with the bug is something that's kind of hard to get the hang off because you're scared that the bug will die but that is a bug. very critical play that you made there i think that that's one reason why <coughs> this build is i do say it's for more advanced players and when it's in the hands of an advanced player it's very strong not to say you can't succeed as you're just starting out because surely you can but it will teach you how to think about this game at a high level which is what you want going forward. You want to have a really good grasp of card counting, energy counting, knowing your opponent's options. That pass Potapiro suggested was a game changer. He knew from counting cards that his opponent most likely didn't have a lethal attack, which allowed us to pass, stock up, brick wall, and kill the next round. So the one thing I'll say is that this build, if you're playing it, go back into your replays and see how it starts to look from your opponent's perspective with their cards getting removed, and it'll give you a better feel for when to make those types of plays. Oh, perfect. We got this. Okay, we're up against this cheesy build that you're going to be facing as you... I mean, I don't know when you start facing this, to be honest. I'm assuming like probably even along the lower, lower ranks, uh, some variation of it. So let's talk about it. It's not on paper the most favorable matchup, but it's also not the worst. The Dusk is super good against a bird in a 1v1. If you end up getting there, it's an automatic win. So what's your approach? Yeah, here, the reason we actually positioned our team like this is because we want the Disablesaur and the plant to attack the same target. Problem is we didn't get we have, any draws on both of them. Yeah. We drew all bug cards. So Which is super quite unfortunate. unfortunate here. Yeah. The thing with the bug is like, since the bug is randomly going to attack, we kind of want to wait until we've already eliminated one of the axes to guarantee we know where he's going. And that's just not the case here. So I'm thinking I go ahead and just pass and hope for a better draw. Not that good. We could definitely end up getting starched here uh, on the front line. He doesn't have any beast or bug cards either. So this is going to be yeah. kind of sad. <laughs> I guess I just try to shield and like not 
die. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. What do you think? I think we should actually play some cards on the plant. Right. At least, so, thankfully, the top aqua is not a animal one, so we won't re-heal back up the damage we do. Maybe we can do one hotbot as well, so we can chain some shield, get some extra shield, and disable some, his risky next turn. Oh, wow, 126. Uh, so a little extra shield here. Now he's firing an entire clip and going to stack energy as well. So what is he going up to here? Like, I think he played all of his energy, but gets three back. So he'll be at five again next round. The one thing I'll say here is this is where discards are going to come in handy, right? Yep. He's actually out of cards already. So he has three cards, which is nothing to really write home about in terms of what he can do to us. And problem is this. Still, Still don't, have, any don't have anything to kill. So we have to hope for the 50-50 here, I think. Unless we... Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to figure it out. Is there anything we can do? I think we have to hope for the 50-50. Yeah. I That's... don't even know if I play a fishnack, though. No, no. Just play the sander and then double... Double... Sandal and pirate. All right, here we go. The reason Hopefully he doesn't attack, attack is because he doesn't have really anything. Oh, man. That was really unfortunate. However, the one good thing is we're discarding stuff. So maybe we're getting rid of some of this guy's heals. That's one thing. Oh, the crit. Let's go. Oh, nice crit. <laughs> That's huge. Oh, I man. The we, bug actually kills it. We will take it. All right. So, I mean, look, it's, it's, you could say it's luck, but it was unlucky that we went up top anyway. So it's all kind of evened out there in terms of settling the score. I'm happy with that. Now he's got four cards. Now we play the fish snack. Guys, take notes. Why did we skip last round? We Or why didn't we play the fish snack, right? Because we knew his options were super, super slim. And he could have stuff like anemones and Nemos, which we haven't seen yet, which aren't really efficient to just be blindly attacking with. Now I think I want to just protect myself a little and do something yeah. like this. Yeah, I think we should have played one Vine Dagger there just to ensure that we don't hit the... Uh... Yeah, that... That was a mistake probably from just running out of time. Um, we were chatting about the other stuff. But hey, luck is on our side this game. And now I think I'd do this for a guaranteed kill. Uh, and then it's a 1v1, right? Yep. Another interesting, actually, the this bug can actually beat the standard bird 1v1. What do you mean standard bird? Uh, the post-fight bird with eggshell mm -hmm. and eggshell blackmail little owl. The bug can actually win the 1v1 against it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, if you end up there, right? Yeah. Because sometimes you have these a... builds run little owls. Right, right. I think you have a video on that of that on your channel, right? Not yet, but I'm working on it. Might get released next week. Okay, So I'm cool. doing double aquas first and then probably against this one next. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'm excited to see you talk about how to win with uh, Double Aqua. This is a misorder since he has Peace Treaty. I should have led with Fine Dagger, but at this yeah. point, game is over anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see you cover Double Aquas. I feel like that could be quite a difficult matchup, right, with the bug at the middle. But at the same time, Fishnack is very strong. Fishnack can, can really, really protect. And then the limiting options, you guys are getting to see firsthand the type of damage that this awesome build can do. Okay, awesome. Those were some amazing games. Thanks, Potter Piro. By the way, guys, uh, go check out his channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Follow him on Twitter as well. He's putting out incredible content, super clear and easy to follow. Let's end this one by discussing some marketplace advice. What are you suggesting? Like, let's do a little search. Uh, so for the disabled sword, I think you just want to get uh, the highest speed possible. And then your minimum should be at least 47 speed because you want to be at least faster than a dust terminator, which is at 46. Exactly. So this is the sort. And look, you can see it's not a huge price difference. So if it's in your budget, right, we just were seeing reptiles down here at 0.07 for 40 speed, obviously not nearly as good and 52 to 50 HP. And if you can take a look at what we can get on a dusk, 
we have more HP, more speed, and just, you know, a little more expensive, but quite a solid investment. Now for your bug, you definitely need these three skills, which is pincer, parasite, and fish snack. Those are must-haves. The back, you can be a little bit more lenient on. I will say you do not want to get something with snail shell like this. You're just going to be lacking way too much on the damage. You'll have durability, but the build already is, you know, a little bit lighter on damage. So this is not one that you want to go with. It might look appealing, but it would be a mistake. So here's what you do. You can search for a few cards, right? Sandal is expensive. It's obviously a really nice card to have, but you could also go with Garish Worm or uh, Buzz Buzz. Yeah, Scarab. These are all going to be okay options. With your tank, try to get zigzag Bidens. That's my top recommendation of some variant, you know, cactus or beach on the horn can work. Uh, and then again, guys, check out Potter Piro because he talks about different tanks that you can use, all the team comps you're going to be facing with this build. He's going to help break down how to beat them. It's high level quality content. And I really think you should all go there and subscribe immediately. I actually have another recommendation for the bug. I, I, oh, I missed okay. It. Yeah. What is it? Uh... You remove the fish neck and just go with snail shell. And okay. then you use a beast beast tail, so like a hare or a Shiba. I actually prefer the Shiba. And then we do the double discard. So you're saying that, oh, this is a cheaper little, variant. Gosh, whoever's watching this video first is going to get the, uh, the backup secret bug that Potter Piro is recommending here. Cheaper version, 0.09, if you're looking for that in between. Now, this gives us the extra damage. We don't have fish knack, but we have snail to kind of serve that purpose of buying us time and stunning the opponent and the double discards. Very, very nice. That's awesome that you uh, shared that. Thanks, Potter Piro. Cool. Any closing thoughts that you have on this one? Yeah. For this build, it's actually very hard to master. So you have to have a lot of game knowledge and uh, basically you need to know the damages of your opponents as well as knowing your own before you can actually push for very high but it's a very fun team to learn so I really want people to take their time to learn this build because this is very fun and very strong build so just keep at it and you'll eventually get better Amazing. And that's the case with any build, guys. No one comes into the game and is like good at what they're playing right away. So what matters is that you commit to something, study it, master it. And if you do that with this one, you're going to be a top player across the board because you're going to know the ins and outs of other teams. And whatever team you decide to play after this, I think you'll have um, a big edge over your opponents as well. So we want that high Axie IQ. Thanks again for coming on the show, Potter Piro. Appreciate you. It's been amazing getting to work together and train together. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see your channel blow up. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to be, have been invited to this channel as well. For sure. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.